Hello, Martha here. I thought I'd come on today and share how I make ATC cards. And excuse the background noise. I have my um, dishwasher on and actually the air conditioner might pop on. But anyway, before I start, I thought I would show you some that I had made in the past. These are the last ones that I made. Little Galaxy ATC cards. And uh, if I remember right, there's not, I don't remember. I don't really remember. I think there's paper under there. Oh, I remember now. I made a note on the back. Paint over paint pour. So what I did was I did some paint pours over some um, small watercolor paper, like five by seven, I believe it was. And I chopped them up to make ATCs out of them. And then I just uh, painted a scene on them and covered it with um, this Mod Podge Extremely Extreme Glitter Mod Podge, you can see here. So they have a really nice shine to them. Uh, as you can see, I usually do my ATC cards mixed media and I almost always give them a coat of Mod Podge, either glitter or matte. I just love the texture and the thickness and the feel of it when it's done. And I call this little um, set Solar System. I only made four of them, but here are two, one of four and four of four. And last year I made some Halloween ones. These don't have glitter, but they do have paper underneath. Uh, well, I don't really say here how I made them. But I know there's paper and paint underneath. And there's some gems on this one. I did this one mostly with Posca pins, I believe. And this one mostly with Posca pins and uh, paper underneath. Painted paper. And then I did this. These two are also some of the paint pours I did. The background, the pinks, and then the purples were two different paint pours and I painted a gnome, Christmas gnome and a Christmas snowman and I kind of tried to match the colors and as you can see they have gems I love me some gems this one has a little bow and a wreath with gems and a little uh, holly with uh, gems I called this one Painterly Sky because of the uh, paint pour background. And this is part of the set, I guess. I had did, uh, done three of, of 12. Now what I usually do is I usually do some paint and paper, some paper I like that inspires me and I will glue it on here. And then I will cut it up, my little guillotine here. Let me see if I can see, I'll have to have my head in a way. But um, right there is about three and a half. I would start three and a half. <laughs> And three and a half. And 
and that one's two and a half. Three and a half. And then I will cut each one down to two and a half. And this is a 9 by 12 watercolor paper. Whoops, I think I did that one wrong. Well, the, it's supposed to be three and a half by two and a half. So I'm probably not going to get as many because I messed up. But that's okay. Now, as you can see, I got three out of that row, and they're the same size as these. And I don't really want to do two at a time because this watercolor paper is kind of thick. But let's see if I can get it right this time. Four and a half. So you're going to have a little bit left over. So I have six so far out of that nine by 12. I'm going to do two and a half. So I've got a little scrap paper, but not much. So I wind up with nine ATC cards out of a nine by 12 watercolor paper. And this brand happens to be this uh, Canon watercolor paper, nine by 12, 140 pounds. So it's nice and thick and takes a lot of media. So here I have my blank ones. Here I showed you some of the ones that I've done before. I was in a, a Facebook group. Well, actually, it's a membership. We didn't do just ACT cards. We did a lot of things. But I'm not in the group anymore. But most of these I did, and we exchanged them. These I just made on my own. Also, here's some from last year that I started and never finished. I'll probably be doing some of those online on YouTube to finish them. And what I did was I just painted my sheet of watercolor paper black and I pasted on some paper that I liked that I thought it made a d nice background for Halloween, like a dark, mysterious colors. And here you see I started drawing an owl and a tree. So here's some that are kind of a quarter or half done. Now here's one. This is not watercolor paper. This is a cereal box cut up. And it's not as big. But I think we can get probably six out of this. I'm gonna cut it up since it's already. What I did was I found some scrap paper that I had laying around and just glued it on there and saw what um, it would look like and see what it uh, could be made out of it. So I did paint it black and I did, didn't leave as much black showing but it's there. So I guess we will start. Let's see, this is about hmm, that way easier to measure it with one of these. Those kind of confuse me when I'm trying to measure it without cutting. 
And sometimes when I am cutting. So this is about seven and a half by 11. So which way would I go to get the most cards? Seven and a half, maybe this way. to do it this way so when you cut it you never know exactly what your each card's going to look like and then you can go from there and see what you might want to do so I'm going to give myself a little bit of time to think about these now these I'll have to de decorate separately because I just did them to show you how I do it. So that's the way I make my ATC cards. Now I have some corner rounders. I can round these and you can use playing cards and stuff, but I never have. I just I like to use these uh, cardboard papers because you can get a whole lot of cards out of one sheet of paper. And you can do it with cereal box too. So here we go. Thank you for watching. I'll be back and I'll be decorating one. Thank you. I'm back. I thought I'd come on and show you what I've been doing. Uh, I started drawing in white trees. On, I decided I wanted to work on these first. I like the purple colors. I started drawing in trees and then I forgot. Then I kind of wanted a moon. So I started drawing those in. Trying to kind of do the phases of the moon. And then I just kept wanting to add a piece of doily on there because I thought that looked so pretty against that tree and actually I might double it just to make it because I thought that could uh, kind of stand represent the moon kind of like that it's coming off the page and I, now that I'm seeing it doubled like this I just might go ahead and double them on there but um, yeah I didn't there's a fin couple that I didn't finish yet and these are not anywhere near done but to get some of my branches to go over the moon I might make these trees a very light gray I don't know yet I'm still thinking and wondering what I should do but in the meantime I think I'm going to try to double that and see how it looks you know these other ones I didn't double I will have to go back and add some if I decide I want them all doubled but I kind of think that looks better like thicker you 
can still see a little bit of the color under there, but um, I might have to do it in double layers anyway, so that um, both of them can be both, sure both stick. But I'll show you how I'm doing it. Should have, uh, I wish I would have done these first before I drew in the trees, but that's way mixed media sometimes is. You just go ahead and change things as you go. Oh, kind of ripped too much of that, but that's all right. Not going to be perfect being that small, but. I could go ahead and kind of draw in my lace. Yeah. Can't tell unless you're really up close. But that part is pin. Okay, now let's try to do this one. I'm going to have to do a big one I think to cover because I went ahead and I was trying to do the phases of the moon and I just wasn't feeling it but this will be the only one I think that I did where I didn't draw the tree in first maybe not I mean before I added the doily moon I think that is so pretty. But we'll see how it looks when I get done. Oh, I did it again. Oh well. Now I've been trying to switch back and forth between the Posca pen and a paintbrush. I really don't have a paintbrush small enough to do the limbs like I want to do. either I don't know I just need some very small detail brushes I think okay now that really looks good wish I could think of something so it's better kind of to go in with my Posca pen so I can get my branches a lot smaller start like I said I may go in and do a double layer on these other ones not sure yet gotta let that glue dry and that paint dry though before I can do too much more just I can get this going a little more
hoops in. This got me my start. Okay, I will work on these some more. And I will come back. Hello, I'm back for a few minutes here. I just wanted to show you kind of where I'm at. I've whitened up my trees and finished them, putting them in. I might add some more branches as I go along. But I doubled up my uh, moon, doily moon, and I painted over it a little bit with white to make it a little bit brighter. And here I was testing. I think I'm going to do my trees in some lavender and purple and just use the white as a highlight so that I can go over the moon so that uh, the branch, the moon will be, high, be behind the branches. But anyway, that's where I'm at right now. And I've got a six, seven, eight. Let's see, there should be another one. Oh no, there's not. There's only eight of these because I did it with a cereal box. So, we have eight of these to do. And I will come back after these are dry and I will add some more and see where to go from here. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Hello everyone, I'm back. I'm not sure exactly where I left you off. Where I left off the last uh, part of the video, but this is what I've done. I changed my mind about the white after I decided to add the doily moons. And I had to go over the doily some with some white since I got it a little purpley and cover up some of the glue that was showing through. But I kind of like it. And I decided against the white trees and went with purple. I just thought it looked, stood out better. And what I've been doing is going over the white that I painted in to make my tree trunks purple. I'm going over it with these markers. Now I went over some of them twice where I didn't think it had good coverage. And I'm still not sure yet what to do about leaves. I did try to do some painting and I wiped it off. I wasn't I wasn't feeling it, wasn't enjoying it. So what I'm thinking of doing after I get these tree trunks colored in, after they dry good, thinking about covering it with a coat of Mod Podge. And then just adding some uh, jewels for it. It'll be, look more like um, probably fruit than leaves. I don't know. I just kind of like that idea. But you never know. I might change my mind if I start and I don't like it. It's kind of what happened here with the purple trees. I kind of like the purple trees. It's kind of different and it looks good on this purple and lavender and pinkish background that I did with collage papers. And probably the white paint wasn't necessary the way I'm doing it, but it did cover up some of the help cover up some of the collage paper seams so this marker probably maybe goes on a little smoother so I'm going over my little moon so some branches 
will actually look like they're covering it. Goes over pretty good. It's a little rough. And I might trim around the edges with it will be either purple or black. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see what looks good. And I know I do trees. I've done trees before and then this one I started as trees. I don't know, I just like doing trees. They're fun. And they're easy to look good because they're so organic. You, It's hard to make a mistake. I mean, you can. Like I got this trunk a little bit thicker than I wanted. It's okay, it's gonna be covered up some. When I learned to do these, I was really surprised that I enjoyed doing them. They're so small, but I don't know, it's kind of fun to work small and make so many that are similar, but not exactly like each other. Make a little set. So. That's got it for that one. Maybe I could put a little branch right here. But you can make as many branches or as few as you want, I guess. That one has a little more moon showing through. some as I go if I think it fits. this Halloween maybe but it kind of looks like spring colors but Halloween uses purple a lot so we'll see what I do you never know with me This one. Go over a little bit, try to make it a little bit darker. I like it darker on these backgrounds. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop for here, right here for now. And I'll come back after I've put a coat of Mod Podge on them. I think it's better to do the Mod Podge before I do any gems. But anyway, if I decide not to do gems, coat of Mod Podge won't hurt the paint and the marker will go over the painting easier with Mod Podge on it. So, if you're watching, what do you think so far? I like it. It's nothing like I intended when I did this collage. That's what I like. I find paper that I like, make a background, sometimes add a little paint in it, black or whatever. And then when I cut up my cards, I get inspired what to make. And so I think these just call for little purple trees. So I will be back. Thank you. Okay, I have got a bunch of these done. Let me show you what I've done. I've named them and titled them Mystic Forest Mixed Media with a little cute purple heart my name my date and this is like two of eight there's uh, so I made five cards this is five of eight and so I just added some cute little gems they're not very bright, but they look cute and a little heart, shiny heart. I think that purple looks good with that background. You can't really see the lace, I mean the lace-like doily that I put on there. You can't really tell what it is, and you can't really tell that it's the moon, but it adds a little something, especially on some of them. Add some texture. This one, not much at all. This one is nice. So they don't have to be all the same and they don't have to be perfect. Um, but I saved one. So you could see how I did them. So I have, what these are, are when I first started the video, I chopped up some watercolor paper to show you how I usually cut up my uh, artist trading card and the sizes of the paper I use. I used a nine by 12 and I got nine cards out of it. Well. Since I usually paint it and put collage paper or something before I cut it, these plain white ones, I just decided to make that my title card. And see, this is done a little different. It's actually really printed out and everything. But I just decided to do this one a little different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I haven't, I didn't put glue on all of these little stickers because I had done them and got Mod Podge and I thought it would probably be enough. However, this one's a lot more dry than these were. so. I'm thinking of going over all of these again with some um, brilliant glitter like in this one. thought it might look good. So, I'm thinking of doing that and that way I really won't have to worry about these little gems staying on it all. So I just try to arrange them around the tree branches 
like their fruit or leaves or something like that. And there's one of my kitties up here to inspect to see if I'm doing this job right, huh, Ashy? Okay. And some of these I use different colors like green, but there's also a little bit of green in the background paper, so I thought it looked good. But all I have left is this kind of lavender color. And just trying to make them look nice all around the tree. That one, the moon shows up really nice through there. Put a whole row. There was several rows across here, and I put a whole row on each each card. Kind of fill it out really nicely. Let some look like it's hanging down lower. I think we need one kind of right here. any sticky on it at all so I put some of my Fabri-Tac sticks really well and dries pretty fast too so I just thought it added a little oh got a little glue strings hanging everywhere but I thought it just looked kind of cute there at the bottom of the tree since there's it's purple with gems and shiny little hearts that's why I named it mystic now I used uh, this is called a crocodile corner chomper and it's got two sizes of corners, a small and a smaller size and a bigger size. And I won't use the smaller size. I went around all my cards and all my backing cards and just kind of rounded it a little bit. It looks a little bit more like a playing card. And so I am gonna put some uh, Fabri-Tac glue on the back of these so I can glue them together. These are a little bit thicker than what I usually do because I'm using a the picture itself the little painting is done on a cereal box cut up and then I'm adding watercolor paper as the backing card instead of a piece of paper Spread it out a little bit and try to get it a little bit even. Might have to trim around a little bit. Actually, I think that one's pretty good. Some of them I had to trim a little bit. I guess it's, I don't know, it's like an extra piece of paper that didn't get covered up, so I'm gonna, well, can't peel it up, so I'm going to, I guess it just, a little bit lumpier than the rest of the background. So I am 
you're gonna go ahead and glue it back down. Couldn't peel it up without making a big white mark. Okay, got those two glued together. Now, you'll notice on the back of these, I went around it with a purple Posca pen to kind of frame it. And now I like to do, I should have, I think I did the other ones first before I glued them together, but just like to go around it, all the way around it, make a little purple frame. I think it makes it look a little bit more finished and I kind of like to get around the side too. Make sure it's kind of thick. I want it to be framed to look more finished as well. It'll look framed if you. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go around. I'm thinking about so it will be really glittery like my galaxy well I call it solar system thinking about adding some of that that's that uh, Mod Podge extreme glitter so I would do each side at a time and get around the sides and I'll come back and let you see when I'm done with that thought I would come and show you how my little artist trading cards turned out. It's a little hard to see on camera the beautiful glitter and the dark purple. But they have a wonderful, wonderful texture. And they just feel so good in your hands. I coated them with Mod Podge before I added the gems. And I coated them with Mod Podge with gl Extreme Glitter Mod Podge after I got everything added on and all the paint and all the gems and all the backing cards. I went over it with some extreme glitter and I have some little gems and a little, um, it's not really a, it doesn't have a sticker on it, but it's a little iridescent heart. There's my backing cards, and I have a heart that matches this heart, purple, purple, and I really love them. They're so, um, they just feel so good in your hands, so much texture. And they're strong. I think these are the thickest ones I've ever made, but I love them. They're so much fun. I love all the different colors in the background and the gems. Everything just is so unified and looks so good. 
I did make a few mistakes on some of them. I spelled forest wrong. <laughs> I spelled it like a name instead of an actual tree forest. But that's all right. Mystic forest. I think all my trees together with the moon peeking through the branches and all the little gem buds or leaves or whatever you want to call them. And the little heart, all the glitter, all the pretty colors. I think it does look mystical. I think it's very pretty. I wound up with eight of them. Love all that texture. It just feels so good in your hands. I don't know if you can see all that pretty glitter. I used up what I had on this, so I gotta stock up on some more. I think I'm gonna get some um, just regular sparkle at Mod Podge. It has a little bit less glittery effect. It gives you some glitter without all this brilliant color but I it, I think it just suits perfectly with these cards so here are my ATCs or ACOs whichever you want I prefer ATC it's simpler and makes more sense to me I think they look great I love them seems like it's one of the best projects that I've made in quite a while I really am enjoying them and I hope you do too. Thank you for watching. Bye.